Hey, you made it. Hey, hello. Hello. Yeah, so we're getting some, I assume you're getting weather because of the same storm we are, right? The, that Hurricane Zeta or something like that, right? Yeah, it was pretty bad this morning. Was it? Yeah, it's it's been a little windy up here um, in Raleigh, but nothing too bad. The power flickered very, very quickly once, but uh, nothing too bad. Yeah, that's good. We had like 60 miles per hour winds here this morning. Uh, it was yeah, and my dog, she's so scared of the any sort of storm, so she decided to like jump on me and wake me up. <laughs> I'm pretty much done for today. <laughs> yeah, we're supposed to, um, my wife was telling me that uh, she saw a news report that said, yeah, we're, we're potentially supposed to get 60 mile an hour winds up here as well, but I don't think we've got anything quite yet. And my only worry is that uh, I have two Actually, I guess, including this, I have three phone calls where I kind of need to talk a little. And so if I lose power, that's going to make it harder. And one of them is with a customer. So that's, that's not going to be good. So let's we'll see how it goes. <sighs> hey, Christian. Morning, Doug. How's it going? Oh, all right. Just up late last night. Angry stomach. Angry stomach. That's not good. Yeah. Going better today, hopefully? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's good. So I can never tell how sensitive my microphone is. Can you hear a sawing in the background? No, actually. Oh, good. Uh. <laughs> okay. I got work going on in the background of the house. Yeah, the thing about it is it still distracts you as the speaker and it's like, it, it does, it's not bothering the audience. It's just, oh. True, yes, but it, as long as you guys don't hear it, I can, you know, I'm okay with myself suffering, but not you guys, so. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you are clear. Okay, good. Hey, Tommy. Yo. Yo. Weird. Oh, usually we have more people showing up by now. Do, do, do. Hey, Ginger. Hey, Doug. Oh, wow. There's a picture with you now. Hold on a minute. Oh, I can't zoom it. Oh. <laughs> I forgot I put a picture on there. <laughs> that was for some other call I didn't want to be on video for. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, hey, Eric. Hello, Doug. Hey, Hi. Christoph. Hello. How's it going? Good. Hey, Brian. Hello. How's it going? So Christian, you're sure you, you can't hear the saws, right? Because <laughs> they have two of them going now in the background.
Yeah, uh, I don't hear anything. Okay, okay, perfect, thank you. It's just, it's amazing you can't hear that. <laughs> All right, uh, Lou, are you there? Lou hi, hi, Doc, good morning. Hello, good morning. And there's someone else went flying by. Oh, Lance. Hi, yes, I'm here. Hello, Manuel. Hi, I'm here. And I think I was marking there. All right. So, oh, heads up. Um, there's a storm sort of on the East Coast someplace. Um, so far, my power has been good. But if I, for some reason, just vanish, it's not because you guys pissed me off or anything. It's just I lost power. So someone else would need to kind of take over at that point. Would that otherwise be a common occurrence? What, what me losing power or getting pissed off? I was pissing you <laughs> off and you leaving. <laughs> Well, I haven't done it yet. Not that I haven't been tempted, but no. No, you guys never are really heard good. Doug angry before. I don't know what angry Doug sounds like. <laughs> you know, you know, it's funny. I, 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 someone else has said that to me fairly recently, and it's weird because I do get frustrated quite easily. So it's interesting that people have said that they don't know what angry Doug looks like. So anyway, hmm. hey, Clemens. Oh, there's a guy that'll get me ticked off. Hello. <laughs> hey, Clemens. Yeah. I, I have, I'm so narrowly missing the uh, out on being able to present something to you all guys, all you guys today. Huh? Couldn't get the homework done. You had homework? I had self-imposed homework um, yeah. with the replication model for the schema registry, but I am, I just got distracted and then I'm missing an hour of work on it. So I'm late. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. One last attendee and then we'll get started. Scott, are you there? Howdy. Howdy. All right. Let's go get started. I think I got everybody. All right. Um, community time. Anything from the community people want to bring up? All right. Moving forward. So I can't remember if I mentioned this last week or not, but uh, I did manage to get, I think, some fairly good times for KubeCon office hours. Uh, again, if you, yeah, now I remember I did mention it. Um, if you'd like to volunteer, just let me know and I'll add your name to the list. As we get closer, the nagging will increase. So please think about that. Uh, SDK call scheduled for this week. Um, as of right now, there is nothing on the agenda. If we don't have anything by the end of this call, we will cancel. Um, interop. So um, I did do some minor updates to the interop doc itself. Please take a look if you get a chance. Nothing major. Uh, I think the biggest thing there is I realized that we probably should have a common service that multiple people can implement so that we can do some testing. Because if it's just a random service, uh, um, it's going to make it harder to, to do any kind of testing if you don't know what the heck you're actually subscribing to. Um, so I just did a quick ping, little ping service. Please take a look if you get a chance. I was wondering, though, uh, since we're supposed to be doing something real next week in terms of interop, whether we should have a time for us to get together to talk, like maybe tomorrow or something, or maybe Monday, to sort of get everybody together who's planning actually coding something? What do people think? Yeah, it would be great. Okay. Do people want to meet tomorrow, or is Friday a bad day for folks, I and mean, we should push it out till Monday? Friday is not good. Not good? Okay. Um, what about Monday? Can we try to pick a time right now to try to meet? Better. So quickly, everybody grab your calendars. Would this time on Monday work for people or not? Um, oh, actually, keep in mind, there's, there's the time where it's a switch over. So we're going to go back to being six hours difference, at least from East Coast to Central Europe. On my side, that will be 9 to 10 uh, Pacific, it works. OK. So noon Eastern people work for people or not? Okay, Scott, you work, thank you. Anybody else? Let me turn it around. Anybody object to not, um, noon Eastern Monday, taking into account the time shift? I can make that work. Cool. Okay, let's let's try that and see how that works. Let's and set up a, some sort of async communication there too. Just make sure that if you can't, we you can still participate. Yeah, and we have the have the um, uh, the interop Slack channel. If you're not part of that, um, let me know and I'll I'll add you. Okay, cool. So same Zoom as normal. All right, cool. Anything else relative to KubeCon or 
discovery interrupt that we need to talk about. All right, in that case, Tim, or anything you want to mention relative to the workflow? Uh, yeah, just quickly, we moved our website to Netlify. So now we don't have the silly redirects to the GitHub pages anymore. Um, we moved our team meetings now to weekly meetings. So it will be every Monday now instead of every other uh, week. So we should make it clear. And uh, just doing overall improvements, our issue section has uh, become quite large. So <laughs> it, it, this is a good problem to have. So yeah, that's it for me. All right, any questions? All right, moving on then. Okay, let's jump into PRs. Do, 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 do. Let's see who's the first one. Come on. Anish, are you on? I don't see a niche. Um, Eric, do you mind if I pick on you a little? Because I know you commented on this one. Maybe you could summarize no, what I he's shouldn't done. <laughs> yes, right. You know, I'll teach you. Um, maybe you can comment on what he's done here and what your concerns are. Eric, uh, you want to? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mute pro button yep. problems. Uh, late night. Um, yeah, so he switched from uh, really kind of focusing on vendor implementations of uh, security protocols and uh, went ahead and uh, was more general. Um, it mostly uh, as a wordsmithing sort of a complaint that uh, what uh, oh, it, it, I, he expresses that the the concerns of security aren't necessarily a part of the core uh, interest of the spec. And I, I don't think that's quite uh, capturing what I would, what I guess the position of the group is on it. And, and that would be more like, these things are of core importance and we need to support them being uh, possible. There's a need for us to do that in a way that doesn't king make there's a lot of difference in opinions on how to solve these security problems or whether some people want to solve uh, particular security problems. And there's a lot of different solutions. So, uh, and, and not only that, as, uh, these solutions evolve over time. And so we want to allow for the ecosystem to uh, continue to react to changes as they uh, shift preferences. Um, and I didn't feel like it really captured that. So that was the rough bit of my comment. Okay, but you said it was mainly more wordsmithing than anything else, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I don't see um, Anish still on the call. Aside from, actually, let me go ahead and show you. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So here are Eric's comments. You guys can read that if you want. I'm wondering from anybody else on the call, um, are there general concerns or people are okay with the direction that Anish was going here? Modulo any wordsmithing tweaks? I think that captures what we were um, the why we scoped out the security the security um, um, aspects. Um, okay. Because we didn't want to sink the ship by <laughs> by pulling in security. Right. Um, I don't think that I don't think that precludes that we might have a um, an extension. Uh, that will define it. So I'm still having the I'm still having the vague notion, um, without having thought about it deeply more deeply, that we can go and and uh, do a mapping of S mime to cloud events, um, where we would effectively use S mime to encode the body of a message, and then would have um, exactly like an email have additional attributes, which would then um, have the the required hints that we have around algorithms, etc. Um, but that would be an extension that doesn't require any changes to the core spec. So um, um, yeah, so I think this re really reflects what we what we want to do, um, and um, that we didn't want to have the um, W star W security nightmare. Kind of dragged into the house. Right. Okay. Anybody else want to chime in? Okay. In that case, I'm going to assume that um, 
and you will respond to you, Eric, at some point in time, you guys can go back and forth on the wordsmithing, but it sounds like general direction is okay. So we just need to wait for this issue or this um, set of questions or these set of questions to be resolved. Sound fair? Okay, and these are, he probably, he probably just hasn't seen these yet because it was just 22 hours ago. So with that, we'll keep moving forward and hopefully that'll be resolved for next week. -dum -dum -dum. All right, Manuel, this one's easy. Just yeah. a typo change here, right? It just, that's yeah, just... during the in the up call, I figured that there was this typo. Yep, and it's clear it's just a typo. It should be data schema. Any objection to approving this one? I apologize. I would have normally just accepted this one, um, but since I didn't notice it till last night, I decided to wait for the call. So thank you for noticing that. What is today? Ten twenty nine. Right. Uh, no objection. Correct. Perfect. Okay. I'll close that one out later. All right. This one. <clears throat> um, Mike Manuel, I was going through uh, some of the interop stuff and I came across the, U this is in the uh, discovery spec, I believe. Yeah, in discovery. I was looking at the URL field and it says it's an absolute URI to reference the service. However, as I was reading that, because it had been a while since I actually played with this stuff, I, I couldn't remember for sure if it was the URL to the service definition in the discovery endpoint or the a URL to the service itself. And this sentence that I have highlighted here was a little bit ambiguous related to that. So I just made it clear that um, it's reference to the service within the discovery endpoint. I think everything else is basically the same. Um, so hopefully this doesn't change the definition that people had in mind. It's just, I think makes it a little clearer what it's actually pointing to. It's not the service itself, but the discovery endpoints definition of the service. Any questions or comments on that? Any objection to approving? Cool, perfect, thank you. All right, next. And <clears throat> Clemens, I'm glad you're on the call because I think this is mainly in the discoveries and the, um, actually I think I do hit yeah, the subscription spec. So this one uh, again was because of the interop stuff I was doing. Mm -hmm. So first of all here uh, in the discovery spec in the subscription config section, um, it's, a, it's a map of key value pairs where I believe the value is um, one of the types conforming to the, the cloud event type system. Okay, so rather than putting value here, I decided to change it to, to the word type, just to make it clear it's just not some random value, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and then just a simple typo here. So this isn't your part yet, Clemens, but for everybody else, are you okay with changing the word value to type just to make it a little bit clearer? Any concerns with that? Okay, now Clemens, to get into your stuff, um, mm -hmm. okay. First of all, I was assuming that ID needs to be unique within the scope of the subscription manager. I'm going to back up a little. This is the ID on the subscription object itself. Yeah. So I was assuming that the ID needs to be unique within the scope of the subscription manager and it's immutable. Is that your assumption as well? Yes. Okay. Does anybody else disagree with that? Okay, moving on then. Next, you had this as filter and not filters. I assume that was just a typo? I, I make a lot of typos here. Um, this is, uh, no, it's, oh wait, it's a filter. I was assuming each subscription could have more than one filter. No, that was intentional to be one filter and not to make them more com more complicated because one more filters kind of starts breaking into jail on how many and then how computationally expensive that gets and so that we we try to keep the filter simple um and uh, um so that was the the goal was to not to not to make that more complicated okay um, so you literally have like if you have one subscription, if if you have if you have a subscription, the subscription has one filter. If you want to filter on, on something on something yet different, um, 
because subscriptions is something that you can better put a quota on than having you know the number of filters. Okay, in in that case, down below you had the word filters. Right. Uh, and so one of those is two is his typo then, right? Yes. Yeah, so one of those things is wrong. Um, so I, the intent, the, certainly the intent that I had. Oh, I, I know what the discrepancy uh, comes from. Um, we were working on this to, with a few folks, and I didn't. I think I didn't do the the language piece, the filter language piece. I forgot who did this. Volunteers. I think it was Ryan. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, yeah, so the intent the intent was to have one filter. Okay. Does anybody who was working with with uh, Clemens on that section disagree with that assertion? Just if it's only one filter, then we need to change all the examples because it's not an array anymore, correct? I, yes, the, yeah, I believe all of these we need to change. Is that correct, Clemens? Yeah. If we go with this one? Yeah, we have to go fix those. Okay. So any any disagreement then with keeping it as just one? So I'll, I'll get rid of this change here. Uh, I do agree with the logic. Okay, cool. Um, okay, we'll, we'll circle back around to the other filter stuff. <clears throat> Next was, I didn't see a spot to put, okay, let's circle back up. So up here we have subscription config with, the, with list of name value pairs, mm -hmm. okay. I did not see a config section in the subscription uh, resource. Now, there were two ways to go here. One was these just appear as top level entities, um, but I, got, I was worried that that would conflict with the extension stuff. Um, so I thought, okay, maybe there's just an oversight and you guys forgot to put a config section to put the key value pairs from the subscription, object, or from the subscription config thing in the discovery endpoint. Um, hang on. We, I have thought of that. Okay. Um, there is a protocol settings. Did you see the protocol settings? I did, but I thought those were specific to the protocol and not necessarily about the subscription itself. That's why I, I thought it'd be, it deserves its own section. So what are you configuring then? Well, so for example, one of the things in the interop doc, uh, doc that I have <clears throat> is I define a ping source and one of the config data, one of the information inside the ping source is how often to send a ping. It, um, what's the interval, right? So that has nothing to do with transport level thing. That's how often to send the ping, five seconds, 10 seconds, that kind of stuff. That's the kind of config data I was thinking of. Um, is that a subscription? It, can be you if you want you could think of it as um well let me, let me just stop there yes it, it it is a subscription in the sense that i want to get events every x seconds so i'm subscribing to a ping service and one of the configuration parameters is how often to send a ping but but isn't the isn't the ping service, so if we do pub sub then the ping service pings uh every x seconds mm -hmm. and then and then you're, are you filtering on this? Because you can't, as a subscriber, you have no authority to, to tell the, the, the publisher what to do. It depends on what you're setting up, doesn't it? So for example, if I'm subscribing, so, so, okay, let, let me give a different example, maybe one that's easier to follow. Let's say I'm subscribing to a cloud object storage yes. and, I need to, and I need to specify what bucket to watch. Yes. That would be a config data. Uh, that is that is the subscription scope. That is what you subscribe to. That that is that is our that is what we what we think of as as uh, as source. So, so uh, I, I think I so let me ask this. So I think what you're basically saying is you would think that would be part of the URL that you send that subscribe to. Yeah. Is isn't that an implementation choice? Um. Well, we need to define. We need to figure out how. I'm under. I'm, let me. Let me go to. Let me just remind. So, give me. Okay, let me give you another example. <laughs> what? And maybe this is part of the filtering thing. I don't know. But what if you want to get just creates as opposed to deletes for the cloud for the cloud object storage? 
right? Yeah, I think you, you could specify that as a filter. You could also specify a, that as a configuration that's a option. On the type. That's a filter on the type. Could be, yes. Um, so let me let me actually ask you a different question then. Was it your assumption that all of the do, 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 all of these subscription config things appear as transport level things? Um, all of those so. The, the subscription, there's, I, I'm, I don't think we've, we've done um, a good enough job here to be make, make it concrete what the, what the scope, how we, how we define what the scope is for um, the, uh, the subscription manager, really. Um, but the subscription, the, the, the subscription operation should specify the scope at which you are subscribing. And I'm assuming it does in some way. Hang on. How are you defining scope in that sentence? Scope means what is the ob what is so the event producer? We're, we're a little bit washy washy here. Um, three two four one is um, on of, of the original document is um, uh, the create operation should be supported by compliant event producers. It creates a new subscription so. The assumption here, the, the implied assumption is that you effectively the event producer has a um, um, exposes that interface or someone acting on behalf of the event producer. And that kind of implies, and that needs to be clear, that um, the, that you have a subscription, you have a subscription endpoint where the endpoint already reflects the scope. The scope meaning what are events raised for? So meaning you would walk up to an endpoint that already reflects the, your storage container. Um, and then um, you know, it has that encoded in the URI that you're talking to. Mm -hmm. And then on that URI, on the container itself, you ask to be notified. That's, okay. the, that's the inherent assumption that, that exists there. Um, that right. is not that is not explicit in that spec, but that's kind of what's in that that was at least that was in my head when I wrote it. But I did, apparently, I didn't write that down. So to to dumb it down for me, it sounds like you're saying the scope is basically the URL. Yeah, right. And, and so and that's also so that's also how so the subscription URL exactly. So that's what the subscription URL is. Effectively, there is a um, um, and, and this is the interaction with the with the discovery with the discovery spec that we need to, is still need to go and resolve. Um, so this is a good discussion to have. Effectively, the question is what is discoverable in as a as an entity inside of a system. So are we are we publishing in discovery all the containers of that store of 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 the storage system? We should. Because it's the if the containers are the ones which are which are raising the events, then then those are the ones that shall be that shall be published, and they should have they should have subscription URLs. If we say we take the entire um, so containers or buckets or whatever they are, right? Uh -huh. um, or we can say we're going to allow subscriptions and we're going to publish as a service the storage account. Um, or you know whatever other entity we have, then that thing will be will be published and that has a subscription URL. So I think ultimately, the things that we put into the discovery catalog are defining what the scopes are on which you can go and, and subscribe. Um, and then um, and you can go and filter those down. And that's why we have all the metadata there. Right. And then once you have found the exact object that you're interested in, in, in subscribing into, you know, knowing all of the events that it has and all those things, and that's kind of what the Discover API needs to give you, then you just go to that subscription URL and say, and that's where you issue your, issue your, your, your post request to go and create the subscription. Yeah, I think I get that and, and agree. I'm still trying to figure out, though, what we do with this stuff. 
um, config. You, there, that what's required there is that effectively all the the protocol the protocol definitions that we have in that are in this subscription. Um, when you subscribe, so when you subscribe, um, there's so you have a list of protocols here. This is in discovery. You have a list of protocols here, which are supported by that by the um, by the um, publisher, or sorry, by the by whatever the middleware is. So by the publisher in the simplest case, but by the middleware in the delegated case, mm -hmm. or you can go and choose from. So you have protocol. Let's say this says um, HTTP and MPP. Okay. The the subscriber no, now knows that HTTP. And if we want to list HTTPS, HTTPS, um, or if we want to say you know, it's all HTTPS only, which I would prefer, um, the, the sus subscriber now picks one of those protocols. But the subscriber, if we're assuming uh, a, a push model, um, will, so let's do that first. The subscriber will um, um, then, it, it knows what its parameters are because it exposes a webhook and that webhook has a certain set of parameters that need to be configured on the, on the subscription endpoint to, for the subscription to be established. So it knows its own URI, it knows the, 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 the authentication key that needs to be set and whatever. So the, all those parameters are something that the discovery service can't know and they can't be configured because it's really about the thing about the subscriber that wants to go and subscribe. Um, for, for pull subscriptions, so when you want to make this, this effectively ad hoc available, so let's say this were the subscription URL would be pointing you to an MQTT broker because that's possible. Mm -hmm. um, then um, we need to assume that based on the URI, um, the client has already permissions because of course we can't tell the clients um, uh, you know, credentials or, or permission data uh, in here, unless you want to go and embed that in, in the URI using some kind of token. But, but if, you, if you say, you know, here's, a, here's a service and the service um, allows you to, to obtain these, the, these following events and they're being exposed through MQTT, then your subscription URL would be an MQTT topic and that implies already that um, you're going to use the MQTT protocol directly and not the subscription API to go and, and obtain those events. So the subscription URL effectively also expresses that. Okay. I'm not sure that. Okay. So let, let me do that again. <laughs> I, no, 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 no. I think I understand what you said there. I'm just trying to figure out how it relates to my question, which is yeah, I'm, I'm what, saying, what, are, what are these things? Okay. Yeah. So I'm saying, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, Say in a very long-winded way. Okay. Um, I don't know what you. I don't know what you need that for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. That that I understand. Okay. You want to kill that. However, it seems yeah. to me. Yeah. And it seems to me that there will be some event producers that may want additional configuration. Right. I mentioned one for the ping servers in terms of interval, and you question whether that's a real event source. But then I'm, I'm, and I'm trying to steal ideas from the Knative world. So for example, another one I think from the Knative world is you can subscribe to GitHub. And one of the parameters you could pass in is a, is a key in essence, that's then echoed back on each, on each notification. So you could verify that yes, this actually is coming from GitHub as opposed to some rogue entity. Now that's not necessarily a transport level thing, even though Sure, it appears as an HTTP header. I don't, I don't view it as, an, as a transport level thing because it's not meant to influence the transport. It's just an extra header that happens, I'm sorry, it's just extra metadata that happens to be sent back as an HTTP header. But they very well could have chosen to stick it inside the body, right, if they wanted right. to, okay? So, so that's, but that's, that's, a, that's something that, that would be on the subscriptions API that the subscriber would supply on the, subscriptions API, on the subscription API when it, um, uh, um, so is, do, do you want to declare those things there? That's what I thought this was for, basically, yes. It, it's, it's additional tweaks or, or configuration knobs about my subscription that I'm setting up. Because I, I interpreted subscription config as configuration about the subscription. Okay, so how do you, 
so let's let so okay so so let's work back from the subscription API. Let's say the subscription API allows you to set headers that then can be played back to you, which I believe we already have in the let me just and I'm just I'm I'm sitting between a thousand specs that I'm that I'm currently writing. Um, so I need to go and remind myself. Um, so yeah, so in 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 three two two one in HTTP we have headers, and in three two 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 MQTT we have user properties, and in MQP we have you can set um, link properties, um, and in Kafka we you can extract the partitions. Through. I think we didn't set the. We, you could have also we could have also added we probably should add the uh, the application properties there. So there there are ways to go and set these values in these various transports. So if you want to go and set a set so yeah so if you want to set a header um, that you want to have played back to you, then you can do this with that with the HTTP settings. True, and I, and I do remember this section right here that talks about that. Right. However, so, so what is so what is the so so given given that construct, how does that correlate to the um, uh, to the, the configuration that you had? So to me, I, I view this stuff in here, the HP settings headers in particular, as different from the subscription config, because this is saying I as a user, or I'm sorry, I as a receiver of the event want to manipulate the HTTP request coming in, right? I want to add this specific header. And that right. and and that's a very uh, sort of lowish level thing. Okay, I view these. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I view these. Where is it? Uh, I apologize. I. Good God, where is it? Sorry. <laughs> I view this subscription config as something different. This isn't going to the low level of saying, "Hey, I understand the transport because I'm a complete geek and I need to add this HTTP header." This is saying GitHub has required that I pass in a key, an API key of some kind, or a token, mm -hmm. I guess that's what I call it. Now, what GitHub chooses to do with that token is completely up to it. Okay, in this particular case, yes, it's going to echo it back to me as an HTTP header, but that's sort of an implementation choice, right? It may choose to do something else with this bit of information. So, for example, I may be passing in. Um, I don't want to go there. I will confuse it. I, I view this as saying, I want to configure my, my, my event producer wants me to pass in some additional configuration information. I need a place to pass that in because it's not necessarily a transport level thing. And that's but, what I thought this was for. Okay. But, but how does that, how does, how does that materialize in the, uh, in the flow back to the uh, to the subscriber. It may or may not, right? In this particular case, I agree with you that it does kind of materialize itself back as an HTTP header, but I assert that there are other configuration options that don't, that don't necessarily manifest themselves uh, as, as like a separate property in the event that gets sent to you. It just, it tweaks the way the producer is going to talk to you. So for example, the ping source is an example, right? It's only gonna to talk to me every five seconds versus 10 seconds. So is that, so, so, I, I, th I think what I'm struggling with is is the, the the this here is being provided to you by the producer. That information is provided to you by the producer, which is then consumed, and so, so the consumer, the potential consumer, goes and looks at these at this at the subscription config. What does that mean to them, and and how do they how what do you expect how do you expect that that consumer now expresses these subscription config values in the subscription gesture. So my assumption was that a, a person who wants to subscribe will look at this field and say, oh, there's a key called interval and it's of type integer. Okay. Now, what that actually means, I don't think we can express here. They have to go look at the documentation to say, oh, interval means how often to send the ping, right? Yeah. And that, but they can at least programmatically now, once they decide they actually want to use it, they can now fill it in with the number they want, and that and this tells them exactly where it goes in the in the subscribe request. So, and then in the subscribe request, they would they would go and then pass in that extra config bit. 
yes, I was asserting, or I was assuming what you guys had written was there would be something like a config bucket with a name of, uh, with a set of name value pairs where the key would be the config name and the value would be the value that you want to, that you want, that you're trying to set to. So in my case, it would be interval colon five for, for a ping every five seconds. Now, if there, if there was some other way I'm supposed to be able to express this five second thing, I'm okay to that with doing that. I just, it just seemed like what I saw here in the specs, that was the natural way you guys meant to go. Um, I, okay, now I understand what you want. Yeah, but, but if this isn't the right way to go, you know, then there, there are two things that I'd like to hear back then. One is what is the right way to do it, if not adding a new config section. But then the other thing is, okay, then what is this thing actually for? So I have, I have a use case. I have a use case in my head um, that comes from um, a scenario that I have a scenario for your functionality. Um, I'm not convinced of your, of your scenario, but I have one. Okay, um, should, we, should we take the queue first before, because you're not doing a lot of talking? Or do you want to finish your thought first? Yeah, let, let, me, let me just give you that briefly. Okay, cool. The, um, um, so in OPC UA, um, for everybody who's listening, industrial standard, standards for um, you know, industrial stuff talking, they have a notion of um, subscribing to um, very fast streams of data where you want to do a bit of aggregation um, before you want this, or you want to only have, um, um, or you want to go and configure whether you want to have all events or whether you want to have keyframes that uh, partial events or keyframes. So you want to go and, and modify the subscriber, the, the, the subscription somewhat relative to the event stream that's coming on. So it's not full on aggregation, but it's kind of some, some modification of the events that you're getting. So either you're getting sparse ones or you're getting keyframes, and you have a keyframe keyframe interval. I can see I can see something like that being expressed here. Um, so that seems to be. Um, so from that perspective, it's it's it seems to be a mechanism that works. We, I'm, I just find the I just found the 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 the, the you know the modification the modification of the producer. I just found that a little weird as an example, but. Um, at least it helped me remember the, the keyframe scenario. If I understand your, your, what you just described there, I think your keyframe or being able to specify the, the size of the frame is, is similar in my mind to the, the ping interval I was talking about, right? It's yeah, a, they, so, so, so their, scenario, their scenario is that they um, have a lot, lots of events and uh, sometimes the data for an event would be 300 different fields. Mm -hmm. And of course it's terrible to go and translate them all if they're not all change, change that much. So um, they would only um, transfer the delta um, with each event uh, whenever there's a change. And then every 10 seconds, they would go and force one full event to be sent so that if, you, if the subscriber comes late into the stream, that eventually they're going to get all the data. Okay. It's like, it's like, it's, so it's like an MPEG, an MPEG where you are getting just arbitrary blocks of, of stuff that you can't deal with until you get a keyframe that allows you to go sync up to the entire stream and know what's going on. Right. Okay, well, let's go ahead and go to the queue. Uh, Scott, you're up first, I think. Yeah, so I have some context on what you're talking about, Doug. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I, I think the disconnect might be that the subscription API is intended to be subscribing to uh, event producers that are already producing events. Mm -hmm. And in, in like the case of Knative, you would there already exists a several ping sources at several set intervals. And what you're doing is selecting the correct source with the, the right shape of payload. And you're configuring the, either the trigger or the subscription object, not the source, right? You don't get to change the producer. You'd get to change the subscription. And in that case, subscription config, where you say like, I would like these extra headers, that would be like uh, the equivalent of like our CE overrides. If you know if it was supported in subscriptions and triggers.
Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Because you want to you want to find out which of the uh, like why are you getting these events, and maybe there's some decoration that can happen for that particular request to subscribe to already existing event sources, not produce an event source because of a subscription, which is kind of backwards. So Scott, help me net, 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 net this out for me. Are you suggesting that subscription config is the equivalent of the CE override? It is the equivalent of that if it was supported in our subscriptions, but we don't have the equivalent of this. It would, I think in the, the equivalent in Knative would be a subscription that is linked to a function that decorates and then passes to the subscriber that you've specified. So, so we, with the current model that we have documented, where where do you think someone would put either the GitHub API key or the the cron schedule for the ping source? You you do not. In both cases. Yes. Uh, if if you're talking about Knative. So that's because interesting you, because because I I could see an argument that says the the, the ping source is just weird. And that doesn't fall into this model. I don't. Yeah. I don't agree with it, but I can understand that argument. The, to say I can't pass in the API key for GitHub, that seems like we're broken. Well, but because you're talking to a delegate, and the delegate needs to be created. I, I think if we if we removed Knative from this picture and we were just talking to uh, GitHub, then I think you would use the subscription config to pass in all the API keys and stuff. It, I mean, like, so this is where like Knative becomes a little fuzzy because ping source is a creation of a thing. A GitHub source is really a subscription to the upstream GitHub API. Right. So let, let's ignore the ping source for a minute and focus on GitHub because I, I feel like you said two things there. And the GitHub so in case, that, go ahead. In, in the GitHub case, I would expect that to be translate. So, um, so there, there's some service that's exposing the discovery API on the Knative cluster that translates into uh, maybe the, the simple case would be a GitHub source, a new channel for you, and a subscription. Uh, you're, you're using Knative terms. I'd rather leave Knative out of it then, right? If, if I was talking directly to GitHub and I wanted to, to subscribe, and GitHub requires that I pass in an API key. I think you said you agree that it would be passed in under this subscription config block. Yes, right? but it's not always one-to-one -one on creating event sources. What you're really doing is delegating up to some upper stream service and doing, uh, trying to implement the subscription API for them. Okay. I, Sounds like an implementation detail. If if the net of it is you agree that in the GitHub case the AP, the the token appears as a subscription config, right? Then we just need to figure out where the subscription config field appears in the actual subscription object. It gets more complicated because the discovery API could expose uh, subscribing to a GitHub uh, webhook, but could, it could also expose the ones that are created already for you that are available because we, we proxy all of the existing webhooks at the moment. So if you look at that, you, you would see several instances of uh, GitHub sources that have been configured and then maybe this generic one that helps you make all the, the mechanics of trying to get those events to you. You lost me. Right? I don't know. So <laughs> in, in the one case, if the source already exists, you don't need to provide the key. If, you, if you're a trusted no, no, you, no, leave, leave, leave Kane out of, out of this because I feel like you're, you're mixing up setting up subscription, meaning talking to the event producer itself. You're mixing that up with the idea of a Knative specific thing that says, oh, you're already getting events into the system. You just want to get them routed to another service. And I think this is exactly why I've always pushed back on uh, Knative is it doesn't transparently look like GitHub. It's always a Knative thing. And so in that case, the discovery API could expose a straight GitHub subscription API, which would take a token. And then there's these Knative GitHub things that don't take a token because they're already created. And that's fine. I, I, the, the work we're talking about here, I think is 
the former, which, which is we are just talking about how to subscribe to GitHub directly, not to some some GitHub. I'm sorry, some some Knative implementation choice that may or may not expose different you know set of configuration parameters. I think we I think we're focusing just on how do you talk to how do you subscribe to GitHub, period. Okay, yeah, and then in that case, I think the subscription config would include uh, things like what tokens are required. Right. And so then I would go back to Clemens and say, okay, if, if we agree that that is a valid scenario, right, where the, the, the person doing the subscribe to GitHub wants to pass in or needs to pass in a token, and that appears as, as a subscription config thingy from the discovery endpoint, where does that appear in the subscribe itself? And Clemens, while you think about that, Remy, your hands up. Uh, yeah, just uh, when I hear you talking about the what the subscription config is, and um, like basically that's gonna define the object that you send when you try to create the subscription. For what I understand, uh, isn't like right now it seems a bit limited, limit, like limited. Uh, don't don't we should just say the subscription config is just like a JSON schema that define what we can pass as a config. So if you want to pass like complex objects, we can. And then it's basically it's up to the subscription endpoint to define what you need to pass. And then it's still like super flexible. So when we implement, we we maybe refine it, but uh, keep it open for now because I have the feeling that uh, we create limitation in the spec. It, I, it, you're you're a little hard to hear, but I think uh, okay, I think you're sorry. I think you're saying the same thing I am. I think in the sense that this is just a set of values that the subscription manager is expecting from the subscriber. And it, it's it's almost just a random bag of stuff. Sorry, yeah. Uh, again, my volume. I really need uh, to fix that that on my mic. Yeah, the I was just saying that basically, we should, in, if we want to keep it open, we should just put a JSON schema as subscription config that describe how you, like what type of object you need to pass to when you subscribe, and then the config needs to match the subscription config schema. But then we keep it open and we don't, because right now it's kind of limited because it's a map for what I understand. Um, Go ahead, Clemens, were you gonna say something in there? Yeah. Uh, so I understand, I, I, I'm trying to, I'm worried about over, over complex, making it overly complex at that point. So, um, um, so putting an extra schema there, um, or creating creating complex complex objects in that place, um, seems to be um, a little much for my taste. But for me, like it's really depend on the, the people who do the implementation. So I would agree with you that uh, the best uh, the best is to keep it simple, but. Uh, he, yeah, the, the, so how much, I think the question here is really how much of, of flexibility and, you know, genericness do we want at this point, at this place? And how much do we want to, how much do we want, really want to go and specify concretely? So there's one thing, there's, so here's, here's one piece that is, that, that might be contentious in terms of, of whether you want to go and bolt this down as a, as a first class thing, but which would probably be helpful and um, would probably be something that most people will use. And that is, um, where would we put a refresh token? Or where would we declare that we want to have a refresh? So a refresh token and an OAuth um, uh, authorization STS. Um, because ultimately we will have to have one and we will have to have that in this game. Um, and um, uh, that's a parameter that we have to go and, and declare. Uh, we will have to go and, and have a way to pass a refresh token in the respective um, URL of the OAuth 
um, SDS, which can go and, and, and trade that refresh token for an access token. We have to go and pass that somewhere. But then the question is, do we, do we want to go and pa pass this in, in these subscription company parameters, which where they would go right now, because they are not protocol dependent. Um, they, they, can be, they can be used with, with you know, multiple protocols and they would be mapping to different constructs in the protocols. Um, or do we say, no, 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 we're gonna go and make that the first class thing. Because my inclination is, um, you would have to go and say, you would have to go and say in the, in the discovery spec here, you would have to go and say, look, this is an OAuth thing. And, for, and by the way, this is an OAuth thing where you have to go and um, you have an SDS endpoint where you have to go and trade in your refresh token and that should probably be in here. And then there needs to be some um, uh, URL that you have to go to, to go and obtain the refresh token that you can do, then go and configure with your, with your, um, with your subscription. Um, so that's so that's one of one of the mechanisms the mechanisms I can and can now think about uh, th think about that would probably go into the subscription config if we didn't care and if we wanted to make that everybody's individual problem but then it is a mechanism that is probably so common that we want to go in first class it and then and then the question is you know how much how much is left to go into that subscription config bucket. I <laughs> But I think it became really, even if I do agree that it might be like the common case, for me as a, as a spec, we need to let it open. And it's easier to say like for now and maybe like a new version will basically start adding those kind of constraints. But uh, yeah, I, I would just see it as like a, easier to make it open and then maybe close some stuff down later. <laughs> And the nice thing with the JSON schema is then if you want to do a, to build a UI on top of it, basically when you do the discovery, you can generate more easily, I would say, the form based on uh, the JSON schema because it's a standard. While right now in the type, we have to define all the types. And so, yeah. Well, but that's what, hmm. it feels to me we, maybe we need to separate out the discussion here. So Remy, I feel like you're bringing up the point of what we have here is too simplistic. Maybe a simple type isn't sufficient and we need to allow for something more expressive. And I think Correct. that's a valid discussion to have, but I think I still think the high order bit here is something that Clemens was pushing back on, which is, do we need this thing at all? And I, I'm not sure where Clemens, your head is at, because at one point you said we don't need it, but now based upon everything else you've said, I'm starting to think that maybe you're convinced that we, we actually do maybe want it you're just not quite hundred percent there yet. Yeah, I mean, I I think this is an, um, I think this is something where you would really def you would really modify the behavior of the subscription per se, where you want to go and outfit that with particular behavior, um, and it's something that is um, specific to. Not the producer, but really the subscription endpoint, as a, as a configuration item that he could go and provide. Um, well, I view it as it could be either one, and that's implementation detail, right? Yeah. Because the, the configuration knobs here that I think that you could look at them as strictly as modifying the configuration manager. I'm sorry, subscription manager, or you could look at them as modifying the producer itself. But from the end user's perspective. I don't think it matters to them. All they know is I'm given this flag and I'm and I can set it and, I, and magic happens behind the scenes, mm -hmm. right? What, what if we take a page from Cloud Events mm -hmm. and make this a URL for a schema registry instead of trying to put put a, kind of like the half settings here, just like the mm -hmm. schema for the data payload in Cloud Events, we say the subscription has a, a schema. It's over here if you would like to look at it. I'm just helping you find that host and its uh, open API endpoint or whatever it is. And then you, and then you, okay, so that payload or so that schema object that you define there, the, then is that going to get posted with the, the subscription request? 
it's, well, actually, I have a hierarchy question. Is it the entire subscription request or just a subset of it? I, I think it's a helper pointer to the, let's say uh, the subscription API has an open API document. This would be the way to expose for this subscriber. It says, if you would like to understand how to hit this rest endpoint or whatever it is, here's my open API document that you can go look at. So you can actually make it programmatic. It has, it has one. Um, Assuming it has one. Yeah, it, it, I mean, the subscription endpoint, we have a description API, it has an OP, a, open API definition uh, in our repo. And but I'm saying that we could use a URL here, or we change what the definition of subscription config means. And one of those, one of the known keys is uh, open API or JSON, uh, JSON schema or something. And then it points to a URL that you can go and uh, look up. That is Thank served you. by the description uh, API. By the subscription API. So this way you know what you have to put inside. Correct? That's. So, so I have for I have for the subscription object that you go and create when you create a subscription. I have an ID, I have a protocol, a protocol settings, I have a sync, and I have filters. So the sync is the URL that you go to, protocol settings, configures that in more detail, um, what the protocol choice is, I have the ID and I have the filter. So so I think what what uh, um, can you scroll down, um, Doug, in what you added there? Yeah, I'm trying to think. And that's the John. That's the config you piece that you added here, right? Yeah, that, yeah. This is new. I think everything else is, except for the, the singular here. Most, yeah. Well, I put dialect inside there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, most of this is is per the spec. This stuff right here is new. And we're running a little low on time. Just. So yeah, you, know, I mean, you can wrap this up. I, well, not finish it, but at least have last comment, I should say. I think I'm, yeah, I think what you're doing there is, is so with the scenario, with the scenario that I, um, uh, um, with this conf configure, configure the, the subscriber scenario with your key and key, key frames, et cetera. I think that's a valid one. And I think the solution that you have here is also not terrible. <laughs> I'll take not terrible. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, obviously we don't want to rush into a decision. Everybody think about this. Maybe we'll talk a little bit more about this on Monday, if not, obviously next Thursday. Um, but we are out of time and I know people need to leave. So anyway, yeah. think about this. The PR is out there. I'm going to make some changes based upon what we've said already. Um, so keep an eye out for another version. but. Um, I think that was probably the biggest change was the config thing. I think everything else was a minor typo type stuff. Anyway, think about this. Okay. Great. All right. And that goes for everybody. I'm not just picking on Clemens there. Um, Doug, I would, I would pull that change. Just fix the typo stuff and make another PR. Yeah, I, I'll definitely do that. That's a good idea, Scott. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. Jim, I saw you in chat. So you're there. Josh, are you there? Josh? What about Sanjay? Yep, I'm here. Okay, Anish, are you there? Doug. Yep, and Josh, you come off mute. You there? Yes, I'm here. Radu, uh, I don't see them online anymore. Ujal, I apologize, I'm probably butchering your name. Are you there? A, I mean, U-J-J-A-L? Oh, and Slinky, gotcha, thank you. Anybody else I missed for a roll call? All right. Cool. All right. Thank you, everybody. Good, lively discussion. And we'll talk again, at least to some of you, on Monday and everybody else next Thursday. Oh, um, let me just double check. Cloud Events SDK. Nothing on the agenda. So anybody want to bring anything up or should we cancel the call? I think we can cancel. Uh, I have some modifications that will be pending, but uh, I prefer to finish the dis our discovery stuff. Okay. <laughs> Based yep. on that, I'll probably have like big pair PR for SDK. Okay, cool. In that case, and not hearing anybody speak up, we will cancel the SDK call. All right, cool. Top of the hour. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Everybody.